Hey guys, welcome back. You know fuel, right? Today we're gonna talk about what fuel should have been if Codemasters didn't put their hands on. Let's take a look. Fuel, as you might know, features a gigantic open world environment set in a post-apocalyptic earth ravaged by extreme weather. Fuel has become more valuable than gold, though your focus will be on finishing the races to get more of that precious liquid, something we've seen on the cult movie Mad Max. Published by Codemasters in 2009, this game received average reviews and its massive 5500 square miles of land was certified by the Guinness Book of Records as, and I quote, the largest playable area in a console game. To this day, Fuel sold about 670,000 units worldwide. There are 75 vehicles to unlock, 70 races and 190 challenges. In some of these challenges, you'll not only be facing your opponents, but as well, huge tornadoes and massive sandstorms. All these features were kind of unique on a video game, but this wasn't the original idea. As you might know, France is home of the world's greatest off-road event, the Dakar. In consequence, France is also a country that built fantastic drivers. French people are passionate for off-road events, and as kind of homage to this fact, a Sobo studio announced in 2005 Grand Raid Off-Road. This was the original title of this massive open-world off-road racing game, and as a huge off-road racing fan, I was blown away by the first trailer and pictures that came out on the internet. Back in September of 2005, I interviewed for my blog Sebastian Loch, CEO of Asobo, in an attempt to know more details about Grand Raid Off-Road. The game would feature typical 4x4 off-road vehicles, motorbikes and trucks, just like in the real Dakar race, and the number of tracks to be unlocked would be, as Sebastian mentioned, insane. It would include online features such as trading car parts, creating race teams, sharing car improvements, parts research, etc. As for the length of the tracks, I was told that races would range from 3 minutes up to several hours with no pausing, but all this depended on the publishing deal that they were looking for. So there came Codemasters knocking on a Sobo's door, probably afraid of the competition. In order to get a publishing deal, a Sobo studio complied to Codemasters' demands and performed all the graphical and gameplay changes asked. The game no longer featured vehicles based on real models like the Volkswagen Touareg and no longer presented a threat to future off-road rally games that Codemasters were planning to release for the next generation consoles, like the beginning of a new brand series of Colin McRae games, Dirt in 2007. And Dirt 2 in 2009. Fuel was born and placed right in the middle between off-road games and open-world racing. June of 2009 was the release date, 90 days before the highly anticipated worldwide launch of Dirt 2. A few elements though remained intact. The free roaming mode that allows us to drive anywhere in the game world without incurring loading times, except if you crash or reset your vehicle, and the exploration mode where you'll discover new challenges as you go. Now tell me, do you prefer fuel as it is? Or would it be much more fun if the original idea prevailed? 
just let me know what you think. You're free to comment below. This is it for this week's episode of the Pixel Thing. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Looking forward to see you guys next week.